I don't know about you, but I'm a huge fan of front-end frameworks. I think I'm addicted to them. You know, Bootstrap, Skeleton, remember this one? I've used this a few times. Defiant, this is a new one that I'm really loving. I think Defiant has the best buttons that I've seen on any front-end framework. So that's another one that I use. Milligram, I used that in my last tutorial. And Materialize, which I used on the last car leasing website that I built. These are all great and they all have their own flavours. Also, they also have their own syntax, their own rules, their own little eccentricities. The fact that all of the different front-end frameworks are, well, different is good. I think it adds a certain variety, it makes life a bit interesting. But the problem is, as I was saying, they've all got their different syntax and whatnot, and it can be a wee bit confusing just keeping up. For example, on Bootstrap, here's how we do buttons. Let me just zoom in a wee bit here. So look at that, it's BTN, then it's BTN hyphen primary, and it's something like that. Okay, that's how Bootstrap, at least Bootstrap 4 does buttons. Now, if you compare that with something like Milligram, Milligram is totally different. That's not saying BTN, that's saying class is button, and then things like button dash outline. Compare that with materialize, and you've got, again, just a totally, totally different way of doing buttons. In fact, these different frameworks have got virtually nothing in common as far as the actual syntax goes. So this is a challenge. And in the past, when I was juggling between different front-end frameworks, I'd spend ages messing around with the documentation and saying, how do they do buttons for this framework? Or how do you do a table for that framework? Well, not anymore. Now, I'm using Nitro. This is an incredibly simple little app that I made. It only took me about four or five days to build it. But what it does is really, really cool. Supposing I'm working on a framework like, let's say, Bootstrap, for example. So what it will do is it will automatically download all of the rules for Bootstrap onto my computer instantly. It's just happened in the background, right? Then when I go to my text editor, I'm on Sublime here. If I want to do buttons for Bootstrap, I can do B. Now I'm saying B, but I'm actually doing three trigger keys. If you listen, you'll hear like I'm going one, two, three, and then I'm hitting B. Now regardless of whether you're on a Mac, whether you're on Windows, or even Linux, there are three keys on the bottom left-hand side of your keyboard that are not doing much. In the case of a Mac, it's going to be Control-Alt-Command. In the case of a Windows computer, for example, look on the bottom left, you've probably got Control, Windows key, and Alt. Let's just call those the three trigger keys, right? And you can click those three keys as if you're rolling your fingers, right? So I'm going B for button, right? B for button, right? Now, that's nice, but suppose I want to do a custom button for Bootstrap. I'm working on it, right? Well, think about the word button. What comes after B? U. It's the letter U. So I'm going to do my three trigger things again, but this time I'm going to do the letter U. And now I have some alternative buttons. Now let's suppose I'm working on milligram, for example, and I want to do the same thing. And I say, how does milligram handle buttons? I can say B. And then I might say, well, what about custom buttons? You, and there it is, right? Straight from the documentation with examples that can be easily tweaked. So just to do the full set, if I'm working on materialize, for example, I can say, okay. And if I'm wanting to do buttons, it's B. Here's the alternative ones, you. So it's all right here. Now, this Nitro thing comes with a whole bunch of different trigger keys that you can use. So here they are right here. So I'll go through a few of them right now, okay? So let's say, for example, you're working on, I don't know, let's pick a framework here. 
maybe something like, say, I don't know, shall we do Bootstrap? It's quite popular, right? So we can do a template with E. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> with E. Didn't my fingers slip there? So that's given us a template straight from the Bootstrap site. If I want to do an alternative template, let's say for an informational page, very common, I'll say I, and that's giving us that. If I want to know, hey, how does the Bootstrap grid system work? I'm saying G. Supposing, I'll just flip back to Milligram now. Supposing I say, how does the Milligram grid system work? Again, G, same key, and there we go. Let's suppose I'm on Materialize, and I say, man, how does those modal things work? Do you remember? Well, I do. I'm going to do an informational page, and then right here, I'm going to do an M, and there's a modal. Pretty cool, right? Let's do another framework. What have I not done yet? Let's do Defiant. And let's do a contact form for Defiant with an informational page. So I'm going to say I. Okay, so that's given us an informational page. Okay, and then if I want to do a contact form, maybe I'll go to this main contact area here, or this main area, and a contact form would be C, and there it is. Suppose I want a login form, L, password reminder, P. Pretty cool, right? So now I'm able to jump between all of the different frameworks really, really quickly. So, for example, here's Skeleton, I'll do a template. Maybe, uh, what else can we do? How about a table? That'd be kind of cool, right? So a table is T. But another thing that's really common, especially with PHP developers when you do a table, is looping through a table and displaying results. That's something that PHP developers do all the time. So think about the word table. Now I've done T for table, right? So that's going to give us that, right? But how do you think we do an alternative table? That's right, it's the A. So there's our alternative table, and it's doing a little loop, and that is a great time saver if you happen to be a PHP developer. One of the challenges that comes up very occasionally with front-end frameworks is they change the syntax, or new versions come out, or something like that. It doesn't happen too often, but it does happen. Thankfully, when I'm using Nitro, I don't need to worry about that because every time I open that, it's checking for changes of syntax. So it doesn't matter to me if they completely change the way that buttons work for Materialize, for example. About a month ago, Milligram changed. So the change was that this URL here, the CDN thing, uh, where is it? This one here changed. They went to a new version and the old one completely stopped working, which was a major downer. But thankfully, I was able to do a little tweak and with Nitro, everybody who uses it just gets updated. You don't even need to know about the new version. The way that it works, in case you're wondering, is there's a GitHub repo somewhere that has code for the different front-end frameworks. When a change happens, I just upload the GitHub repo and this little app reads that repo, and so no more worrying about updates or changes of syntax. At the moment, I've only got a handful of frameworks on it, but I'd like to add a few more if only I could find the time. Anyway, that's Nitro. Now, one of the huge discoveries for me this year has been Blueprint, if I can find it. So, this thing here, this layout library, I'm loving it. In the past, it would take me about half an hour to build a page that was responsive and that had some kind of responsive side nav on it or sliding nav. With this thing, I'm able to do the same task in about 10, 15 minutes. It's a massive, massive time saver. And as much as the other frameworks are good, 
I haven't really found one yet that handles grid systems as well as Blueprint. So one of the things that I'm working on right now is I'm just adding Blueprint to everything. So here's my template for Milligram. And if you look closely, I'm adding Blueprint now onto everything because I'm loving it. I consider it an essential tool, you know. And also, this line here, this line here, that is not, as far as I'm aware, in the docs for some of the frameworks. I don't think it's in the docs for Milligram. But if you have a look at W3 Schools, this here, it actually says it in W3 Schools. Use this line on all of your web pages. Who'd have thought? And who even remembers that, you know? So again, when I'm using Nitro, I don't need to worry about that. I can just kind of go, okay, informational page, and you'll see everything I need is right there, and we can get straight to the good stuff, you know? Another thing that I can take no credit for whatsoever is Emmet. I'm sure some of you have tried it, and it's really, really worth tuning into Emmet if you haven't done so already, you know? So Emmet just allows you to create stuff really, really quickly, so I can do you know, things like um, a table with a TR, loading up TDs times three tab, and stuff like that. And if you want to know what I'm working on, like today, well, I've discovered that it's possible if you know your way around some different shortcuts and whatnot, it's possible to do entire layouts without using your mouse. Believe it or not, your mouse slows you down, you know? So, I'll give you a quick demonstration of what I mean here. Take, for example, imagine you're building a site like this, right? I'm only going to do the first one minute. I'll just do a page with a yellow background. We'll have a little top gutter and a bottom gutter. That's it, right? So, you get one minute, right? Now, check this out. This is my mouse. Actually, I cannot switch this off, but you're going to have to trust me. I'm not using my mouse, right? So the mouse has gone. Now, watch how quick this is when you don't use your mouse, right? So I'm going to call upon Nitro to do a basic layout with just Blueprint and the viewport thing. And then I'm going to just use Emmet and check it out. Here we go. So it'd be something like that, then a div with a class of gutter, then gutter hyphen top. I'm going to have two of them. I'm going to do a vertical select and an HTML space. Back to a single select, back here, and BTM. Then I'm going to space down. I'm going to do some styling. I'm going to have a body with a background color of yellow. I'm going to have a margin of zero and padding of zero. Then, for the gutter, we are going to have position of absolute we're going to have a height of 30 pixels, a width of 100%, and a background colour. Let's go with 991234 of those zeros. Then, for the gutter top, we're going to say top is zero. And for the gutter BTM, we're going to say bottom is zero. Stop. Now, over on the right-hand side, we have our basic layout started. Maybe you can do that faster, I don't know. But the key things to notice about that video is that thanks to Nitro, I was able to get exactly the template I want with the cursor exactly where I want it, with my viewport line up here, and blueprint ready to go here. And I could do this in under a second. It's as easy as that. Now, for this particular layout, I decided I'm not even going to use any of the front-end frameworks, let's just hard code. And it's a shame I should have had the camera on, because I promise I'm not cheating, right? And what I want you to notice, there are people who can type much, much faster than me. They're everywhere. But if you watch closely, I'm doing the minimum amount of key presses here. I'm saying div. I was saying that. I was saying that. I was doing that multiplied by two tabbing. Then I was doing my vertical selection. And notice how everything is the minimum amount of key presses. I'm hitting escape. I'm going down. And look at the details. I'm not going 
left, 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 and then deleting. That's not what I'm doing. I'm going down, and then I'm going left, holding it in, and then stopping. And I missed it that time. I'm honest enough to say that. But I'm holding it in, stopping, boom, there we go, I got it. Do you see what I'm saying? So everything is the minimum amount of key presses. When I'm doing this, I'm not going to the end, hitting, you know, clicking the mouse and then doing that. Instead, when I'm here and I'm doing this and I want to go to a new line, I'm doing command return. Obviously, those shortcuts are slightly different for Windows and Linux, but they do exist. So everything is the minimum amount of key presses possible. I'm not perfect at it yet, but this is what I'm working on, right? So for example, when you do something like body and that, if it suggests background color, just use it, you know? And so when you do that, let's say margin, Okay, now again, I'm doing command return, minimum key presses. See, so it's saying padding, so fine. That's the vibe. I'm going to finish with a demonstration of how brilliant Blueprint is at building responsive grids. So over in the documentation, I do have a container example here. And I'm going to paste in a runabout here. Okay. So, well imagine it's an online shop that contains a bunch of items, okay? And maybe we've got, let's say, 12, 12 items, and each of those items is inside a div, right? Now we can do some styling, of course. We can say, and I'll just do it right here. We can say that if we're talking about the class of items and it's a div inside there, let's just give it a border of one pix black solid. Let's have a background color of white. Let's have a height of 160 pixels. All right, now save that and head over here and refresh. Doesn't look too great, right? <laughs> Does not look too great, folks. Not at all. So, how can we turn this into a nice grid? Watch this. I'm going to say BP equals grid. And I'm going to say 6 at small, 4 at medium, 3 at large. Done. That's it. A fully responsive grid that works on all major browsers. Check it out if you don't believe me. I'm going to refresh. Look, now shall we give this a wee margin? I think we should. So style equals, let's do a margin top of 200 pixels. So here we go on the right hand side. Look at the grid. And as we bring it in, check it out. Completely responsive. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that fantastic? And if you're wondering what I'm doing here is I'm saying give it a grid or turn it into a grid. At a small size, the divs should occupy six spaces. So there we go. You assume that there are 12 spaces or 12 units of width on a, you know, in a container. On a medium size, the divs occupy four spaces. That's why there's three of them. And on a large size, each div occupies three spaces. I have to give a shout to Corey Rylan for making that. I'm not sure, but I think he might be a member of the Angular team. I'm not entirely sure though. But uh, congratulations and thank you for building Blueprint. I think it's the best solution for doing layouts that I have found so far. By the way, I've just realized that the fixed footers should have a position of of uh, fixed. So there's a stupid mistake. I made it absolute when I was doing my little thing here. So that should have said fixed. But that's not really the point, you know. There's actually a YouTube video came out recently from the Google developers 
and somebody does all of these fancy layouts and whatnot with about half a line of codes, you know. Uh, there's some incredible CSS stuff that can allow you to do things astonishingly quickly. I generally avoid it though because I'm concerned with browser compatibility. But the point of all of this is not to do a perfect layout or anything. Like for example, when you're typing out something and you're just practicing, right? And you're maybe just doing things like this. And even something as simple is just saying like div time, oh, see I missed it, it's because I'm on a smaller keyboard, div times to tab, try that without looking at the keyboard, you know, and it's not so much an exercise in doing the best CSS and making it all perfect, I'm just trying to get used to doing things quickly, hopefully without using the mouse too much, and hopefully without looking at the keyboard. Anyway, this has been a little, I don't know, a quick tour of what I'm now calling, quite arrogantly, the holy trinity of speed coding for front-end development. Nitro, Blueprint, where are you Blueprint? And Emmet. Nitro, at the moment, is available for members of Speed Coding Academy. That's at www.speedcodingacademy.com. Calm, calm. And in case anybody's really frustrated and saying, man, I don't want to pay that and times are tough. Well, that's okay. In that case, just make friends with somebody who is in Speed Coding Academy and maybe you can convince them to give you a copy. I'm not going to stop that kind of thing. It's fine by me. Also, I'm going to be releasing a whole bunch of stuff soon that will be open source and... I want to become a guy who launches stuff, you know, so hopefully I'll have some cool stuff coming out that will be entirely free and you'll enjoy that as well. Now Blueprint can be found at blueprintcss.dev. As for Emmet, I'm not sure who makes it and forgive me, but that's a package that you can get for all of the major text editors. Uh, it, there's one for Visual Studio, whatever it's called. The one that everyone's using. <laughs> and there's one for Sublime. I think you can get it for Atom as well. Anyway, I hope this has been useful. Bless you. Have a good day. And I'll talk to you soon.